Today I'm meeting at some of London's dirtiest takeaways. As determined by the Food Standards Agency who give a score between 0 and 5. The dirtier the place, the lower the score. And today I'll only be eating at 0 out of 5 rated takeaways. And these are the finest takeaways that require urgent improvement. So I wish me luck. And today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Okay, so the first place I'm eating from is a place called Irang Restaurant. I think it serves Korean food. I've just ordered something called Bibim Bap. Bibim, bibim I, don't know, I don't know what's going to turn up, to be honest. Slight issue, I don't have any utensils here. I've asked for some, but they don't always give you some. Why well, I have to end up eating it with my hands? Anyway, it's going to be here in a minute. Prepare me my zero hygiene food. I mean, surely you can't need that much preparation. Just chuck it in a bag and send it to me, do you know what I mean? You don't need to cook it. Right, it's arrived. Edward C. Okay, I got a little uh, Korean food unboxing. No idea what that is. No idea what that is. No idea what, what that is. And no idea what that is. Is that egg? It's supposed to be an egg? I do, however, have your utensils. I mean, that could be anything. I don't like the way it wobbles. I don't know if I've tried Korean food before. I don't really know what Korean food is. It's gonna be a new one. I mean, look, I can see some things that I'm kind of familiar with. I can see what looks like cucumber, beef, egg. Doesn't look that appetizing. Let's dig in. Zero out of five hygiene rating. Wish me luck. It's not warm. Genuinely not warm at all. The egg sort of tastes like a a leftover from a hotel breakfast buffet. Are you supposed to put that on it, do you reckon? It's got all like sediment at the bottom that's settled. I haven't got a clue what that's for. It needs instructions. Oh my word, that is disappointing. It's drier than the bottom of Gandhi's feet. His crusty feet. Honestly, they probably serve more appetizing stuff on death row. Look, it's a decent sized portion. If you're into Korean food, maybe you'll like it, but it just doesn't taste fresh to me. As I sample some more of Orang's food, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that helps encrypt your online data and protect your personal information from dirty little slugs. That's what it tastes like. As you can see right now I'm in a hotel room on public Wi-Fi which doesn't feel particularly safe to be sharing with strangers. It's just so slimy. So to secure myself all I do is I hop on the Surfshark app, click to join a VPN and boom, protected. No chance of those hackers meddling around in my affairs. I mean there is genuinely a chance that this could make me ill. Furthermore, sometimes when I'm traveling around I get a little bit bored in hotel rooms. This might actually put me off food for life you know. Because there's never anything on TV and I completed Netflix. Or oh, have I? I'm starting to wonder if this beef really is beef. With Surfshark you can switch your location to somewhere else in the world and unlock new content. I don't know what I'm eating anymore. A lot of VPN companies put a limit on the number of devices you can have per account. But not Surfshark. You can have as many as you want. It's on them. It's unlimited. Do what you want. Just go mental with it. <laughs> so get this Black Friday deal by using the code Chapman to get up to six months additional free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Which also makes it risk free because you can get your money back if you want after 30 days. I wish I got money back guarantee on this. Just use my link in the description below to get protected today. Genuinely, I, I can't eat any more of that. Okay, so the next place I'm going to go to is a place called The Life Goddess. Pretty sure it's a Greek place. Don't know if I've ever had Greek food. Really expanding the palate. Also has a 0 out of 5 rating. And I think we're going to have to sit in for this one. So I'll probably give you my review afterwards, but I will film the food so you can see it. Um, yeah, I can't imagine it's going to be great. So I went to The Life Goddess, got a sandwich, and noticed it was wrapped in cling film, but I thought, no, that's that'll trip the, the display sandwich. No. No, it wasn't. Little did I know, when the sandwich was brought to my table, still wrapped in cling film. Didn't even unwrap it, put it on the plate. Bit bizarre, bit weird. Anyway, had a, a lovely feta cheese sandwich. It was very nice, very classically Greek. It's the only Greek thing I was aware that existed, so I picked it. I'm not going to criticise it for the sake of it. It was a decent feta cheese sandwich. I never had a feta cheese sandwich before. At first, I'll tell you what, I'd go back and have another one. So yeah, quite surprising that it was 0 out of 5 rated on that one. You wouldn't have expected it from the look of the establishment, from the interior, from the food. Just don't wrap your sandwiches in cling film. You know, you're not making a packed lunch. You're meant to be serving sandwiches to customers. Scrap the cling film for heaven's sake. Anyway, on to the next place. The next place is called K-pop. I'm always suspicious whenever somewhere names themselves after a sort of a genre of music. Probably not going to serve food very well. Hence the sort of zero hygiene score. And I decided to step up the ante a little bit and thought, well, you know, at this zero out of five rated hygiene place, why not get chicken? What's a bit of raw chicken gonna do? A bit of raw chicken's never killed anyone. I've still yet to have gone to a funeral where it was Dave 
dead by chicken on the grave. So never, never been to a funeral like that before. I think it's made up when people say, oh, be careful, raw chicken. I think it's made up. No one's ever died a raw chicken. Never seen them. Never been to one of those funerals before. Maybe mine will be the first. Anyway, I step inside K-pop. I'm virtually the only person in there, to be honest with you. And I ordered myself some um, chicken teriyaki. That I just recognised the name of it. And look, it was very dry. I mean, there was a selection of sauces, but look at look at me. Do I look like a saucy bloke? So it was very dry, but that was definitely my fault. I should have put some sauce on it. It looks like it was probably spicy chilli sauce. I don't really do with spicy stuff. So I decided not to put any sauce on and consequently just ate chicken and rice, really. Dry, yeah. I mean, that's what... That's what happens when you don't put any sauce on. Would have been nice to have maybe some vegetables in there, not literally just chicken and rice. It was actually okay. I think it was a 3 out of 5, so a, a 6 out of 10. Can I understand how it maybe got the 0 out of 5 hygiene score? Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that might have happened. But you know what? It, it surprised me. It, look, it's not the greatest food in the world, but it certainly wasn't as bad as I was expecting given the hygiene score. It was edible, just. And so far I haven't, you know, excreted myself. I'd say that's a win. Next place I'm going to is a place called Linden's Crepes here in Chinatown. Uh, again, zero rated hygiene. We're gonna go try, sit in, see what it's like. Okay, so I've just got myself a delicious bun, as they call it. Uh, it's like a vegetarian bun, I think is what I've got. I don't really know how you eat it. it Cost me £3.50. I'm just gonna attempt to eat it like this. Zero hygiene. Delicious bun. Let's see if it is delicious. It's very doughy. It's basically a pasty. A vegetable pasty. All the vegetables inside are. I'm sensing onion, carrot, lettuce. It's very doughy. It's very bunny. It's quite a thick, a thick shell. It's not really for me, that, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's good for me. Is mm -hmm. it okay? Of course, yeah. It was a little bit like eating vegetables through a slipper. This sort of so-called delicious bun wasn't so delicious. Maybe I'm at fault for going for a vegetable one. Maybe I should have got a meat one. But I'm thinking, I had a lot of meat so far. I'm thinking, no, no, let's, let's go veggie. That's a big mistake. Never go veggie. The outside of it was just like a doughy ball of dough, of just doughiness. Like, it was as if... It hadn't been put in the oven yet. At one point, I considered going back and being like, sorry, is this, have you cooked it? Or is this like a thing where I have to cook this at home? Like, what's going on here? Because this shouldn't be this colour, surely. Cook it. Just cook it. £3.50. Can you go wrong? Yes. Yes, you can, actually. Turns out you can. But it was kind of fun to sort of play with. It was quite nice. It was like a beanbag meets Play-Doh. But it was nice to take a trip to Chinatown. You know, that's the first time I've ever been to Chinatown. Um, not really a town. To be honest, it was a few streets. And my final restaurant that I was visiting, to my surprise, was Marco Pier White's restaurant called Mr. White. That has been given a 0 out of 5 hygiene score. Now, I think this one might be because of bad management. I think of hygiene-ness. Because inside, it was quite luxurious. It was quite a fancy place, to be honest. I didn't really film too much in this one. Hence why I'm doing this. Because it was quite a fancy place. I did look out of place, sat there as a loner by myself, whilst everyone else was in groups and, you know, spending lots of money. I was there on a table by myself, having a burger. Now, this burger cost 20 to zero, 20 British pounds for a burger and some chips. I don't know what's going on. I get it's Leicester Square. I don't care what the square is. I don't care. 20 pounds for a burger and chips. You didn't even give me any nonsense. Give me some nonsense on the side. Give me some, like, side salad that I'm inevitably going to leave. Give me some of that at least to try and make it look like more. Instead, you stuff some gherkins in in a bread bun, put a burger in there, shove some chips on there, and you give me a little bit of Heinz ketchup, which I'm not going to bother opening because it's a waste of time. So yeah, it was actually quite nice. It was really a quite nice burger. Uh, I think it was sort of cooked or semi-cooked. I, I, I don't know. It had a bit of colour on the inside. I'm not sure what the term is. I can't be bothered looking it up. But at no point did I feel like it was going to poison me. The food itself was quite nice. Disappointed by the price, though. I'm not spending 20... Well, I did spend 20 quid. I did spend very good in the end. And then I've got sorbet afterwards. Now, that sorbet, that raspberry sorbet was actually very good. Very, very good raspberry sorbet. No no issues with that hygiene, let me tell you. Slurped it right up. And the weird thing about Mr. White's is it was rated like 3.4 or something stars out of 5, I think. Like, it really wasn't rated particularly highly by the people who'd been there either. So, clearly something was going wrong there. Uh, the hygiene might have been a factor. So, look, I think we've established that, yes, okay, some places you can kind of understand how it's got its hygiene score. In other areas, though, I 
actually some of the food tasted all right. Mr. White's was pretty good. Probably won't go back to Lin Lin's ever again. Uh, but you know, there's some other places which actually seem to do okay. K-pop, maybe with a bit of sauce on top would have been all right. And actually the feta cheese sandwich, very good. Orang, probably not for me. Overall though, should you be afraid or intimidated by hygiene scores? Sometimes, but also sometimes no. Sometimes, sometimes actually, no, you can get yourself a decent burger for £20. Massive thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click my link in the description below to go get your Black Friday discount. Cheers!